And she was that way. She was a worshiper, so on her dying, I mean, she come to long enough that she worshiped God. And I was thinking about that. When it comes my time to die, I want to still raise my hands and worship Him because He's a word. It's time to take up our tithes and our offering, and we will bring it to the altar and lay it down. Father, I thank you for another opportunity. We don't want to fail to praise you that we can assemble in your house and have reason that we can come together to worship you because you are all the reason we need your word.
lends us to the notion that we have the power and we have the authority to resist going back into bondage. Somebody say amen. The enemy will try to uh, tempt you, will he not? He'll try to throw things in your path to get you tripped up. He'll try his very best to, to get you off course and to knock you off kilter with God. But the Bible tells us to stand firm and don't submit again to the yoke of slavery or to the yoke of bondage. And if you notice that word submit again, it's something that we walked into in the beginning. Let me just say that. We walk in to, the, to, to different things that bind us up a lot of times. And the Bible tells us that once God has set us free, that we're not to walk back into it. Next verse, please. Go to the next verse. There you go, Ephesians chapter 2. And it says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Verse 2. I think it's like the first five or six verses there we read. It says, In which you previously walked, According to this worldly age, according to the ruler of the atmospheric domain, the spirit now working in the disobedient, verse 3. It says, we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out uh, the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and by nature we were children under wrath as others were also, verse 4. But God, who is abundant in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, verse 5, made us alive with the Messiah, even though we were dead in trespasses, by grace you are saved. Somebody say amen. amen. Verse 6, I believe we put in there. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus. I love this particular passage of Scripture because it's pointing out to us that even though we can walk in liberty, we can walk in the freedom where with Christ has made us free, we're not to go back into bondage, but we're also to remember that every single one of us came out of that place. We came out of that place. Do you know why that's important? So that we don't begin to condemn and look down on other folks. And you know, we, we've talked about how God's been teaching us that. But at the same time, we've got to remember that, that regardless of where we are today, regardless of who we are in Him, that He has brought us out of that same place. And actually what He's talking about here is the spirit of adoption. And that God is willing to adopt us even though uh, uh, we, we weren't born into uh, the kingdom uh, as, as the... Uh, Jewish people that we were Gentiles but we were adopted into uh, uh, being his own and I'm thankful for that spirit of adoption aren't you yeah. and it doesn't matter who we are I, I, we had a family here this morning I, I wanted to get with them but um, we have a family here in our church that just recently celebrated um, the adoption of of uh, a, a young lady into their family. And we're just so thankful that God is growing that family and how he's using them. And, uh, uh, you know, that, that young woman, that young girl is now as much a part of that family as the children that they birthed into the family. And uh, she's entitled to you know, the same benefits and, the, and, and the, the, the same joy and the same love and the same care and the same nurture and, and I'm thankful that because we are adopted into the family of God that we are entitled to the same things that Jesus, his own son, is entitled to. We are joint heirs with Christ, the Bible says. That's exciting stuff. It's exciting stuff. But if you go back to the first verse that we read in, in uh, uh, Galatians there, for freedom that Christ has set us free. Don't let yourselves be burdened again, the NIV says, by a yoke of slavery.